time with your with your loved ones. So don't take Sunday morning messages lightly, because it's normally Derek's. Uh, <laughs> I was hoping to sort of get away from it, but uh, yeah. So what am I going to speak about this morning? I think you've heard me speak before, I mentioned this before, that when, when I teach in class, I would generally bring principles across to what God has told us, how we should live and how we should act, and it's things that work even if you believe or non believer like gravity. But when it comes to church services, the most important thing for me is to glorify Him Amen. as a person. So, I'd uh, like to believe that the message I'll be across this morning uh, will do just that. Um, so, here we go. Who knows, who believes that God loves you very, very much? Um, you all believe that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright, and if you believe that God loves you very, very much, how do you believe you should conduct your life? You have to answer anything, it's not cross. <laughs> you think, that's what you think. John 3.16 says that God, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He loved us so, so much that He gave His only begotten Son. And His Son died and He rose again from the dead because of His great love for us. A majority of us sitting here believe that God loves us so, so much. So I'd like to just reinforce how faithful God is to us. Because 90% of us sitting here are not here for good behavior yet. There's some visitors today, so I'm going to make sure I do a percentage thing here. Yeah. We'll be very careful, all of us here, not me. 90% 90, 90 of us here are not here for good behavior. And it's very difficult when we behave a certain way, when we act a certain way, to trust in the love that God said He has for us. So we need to understand that despite of us, that God is faithful to us. And it's mentioned over and over and over again of God's faithfulness to us as men and women. Despite our behavior, despite what we think, despite the way we do things. So what I'll do is I'll bring up a scripture in Psalm 36 verse 5. And I wish we had the music to it. There's a band that I enjoy called Third Day. I think some of you might have heard of it before. I think one of my colleagues here loves Third Day very much. I think Pastor Kevin. Uh, and this is one of the songs. Let me just tell you something. I've noticed lately when I preach that I, that I get thrust in turning to the pages in the Bible. I, I, I'm worried I'm not going to find the book. <laughs> now, I must have been, I've touched the Bible a few times in my day. So it's very strange, this like hidden thing where I'm like, oh, damn, there's songs. End up in the wrong place. It shows you, yeah? So you know, no matter where you're at, that you can still have this insecurity. Thank God for His faithfulness. Thank God for His faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Despite the way we feel sometimes. How, how we feel sometimes. 36 was 5, you guys are there quicker than me because I'm talking too much. So it's turning to... I like this song. Let's actually sing a song. The third day, things sings a song. And I remember when when I left many years ago, when I left Boxburg. Those of you who don't know me, I'm from Boxburg. Sorry, my name is Ralph. Visitors, my name is Ralph, and I bring up one of the councillors here, and I have the privilege of serving in this ministry. Um, I left Boxburg many years ago, and I went to go serve in a ministry, Pastor Lynn and Pastor Jerome's ministry. And um, what I did was, it was a huge step of faith because. I, I realized my life was a big mess and I needed to really do something extreme. So what I did was, the extreme thing I did, I sold everything, I paid off my debt, I moved to Meisner, sold my car, I had nothing, so I had to walk everywhere. And it was a huge step of faith and I, and, I, and I humbled myself and I started working in a restaurant for a period of time. And I remember this song so much because when I used to walk home, sometimes I'd run and cry. I thought, am I mad? How can I sell my car, leave all my loved ones, leave my friends, leave everything and leave? Because when I left, I told no one. The only person that knew was my mom. And I sort of told my brother. But I only told my father once I arrived. I came in on a bus. And as I came down, he'd be to my eyes, he'd come down. And I said, she's coming down with the bus. And I see now, and I thought my dad, I said, hi dad. Where are you? I said, I'm in Niles, are you joking? I said, I'm in Niles. I left. And he was very upset with me. Very, very upset with me. But be that as it may, so what happened, I used to stay in a place called Meisner Heights, from the, the dry dock, Nazi Key area, it's quite a walk. So I got very fit. I didn't look like this, so I was quite fit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm start walking here. And I remember, I remember walking home sometimes, and it wasn't all plain sailing when I got there. It was, it was tough when I got there. Obviously I still had my own issues to deal with. I took myself with, I didn't leave myself in Boxwood, I came with. So it was a little fight when I got there, and... 
So when I used to walk home, sometimes I get very teary eyed and really sad because you miss your family. You miss, you know that sound familiar? You miss family, you miss friends, you never make the right decision. Da, 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 da. And this song kept coming up, and I remember walking through the booth, through the, the road, and I remember singing this song out loud. I will not sing it for you today, I will scare you. I want you to sit through the witch. 36 to 5 says, Your mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens. Your mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the great mountains. Your judgments are great. O Lord, you preserve man and beast. He's faithful. I remember singing that, and it's such a beautiful song. Now, faithfulness, some of the words for faithfulness is stability, dependability, and nice, I like this one here, devotion, hey? yeah. faithfulness, devotion. Can you imagine the creator of all things is devote towards us? Allegiance, do you understand allegiance? Guys from Boxburg and Brad Band, you understand allegiance? I'm, I'm one of them. So. <coughs> and a big one, commitment. Commitment. And all through Psalm 89, Psalm 33, all through the, New, uh, 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 the Old Testament and New Testament, it speaks about this faithfulness of God. This is one in particular is one of my favorites. But it says that God is stable, He's dependable, He's devout, He has allegiance towards us, and He's committed towards us. Mm. He's committed towards us. Now, let me ask the question. Our behavior before we came in here, have you been very committed towards Him? No. no. Why not? I think every one of us want to please God. Okay. I think all of us, if we believe God loves us, we want to please Him, but we just feel we cannot please Him. We feel like we miss it time and time again. Maybe because we're using the wrong mechanism to, to, to please God. And those of you who know your scriptures know there's only one thing that pleases God. Faith. Mm -hmm. Faith pleases God. Anything pleases God. Not your hard work, not your clean time. Faith pleases Him. But understand, it doesn't mean you can get away with whatever you want to get away with. Because if you're walking in faith, you won't behave a certain way. If you're walking in faith, you will not behave a certain way. So I'm going to say, much, much of my life, I've not really, I've believed and I've trusted and I've, I've trusted. And I believe that God loves me and He's there for me. But my behavior that I acted most of my life was not a man of faith. I believe many of my decisions were made in fear and worry and concern. And my shortcomings and what I see and what I feel and what I hear. If you look at a person in recovery, that we are in addiction because we want quick fixes. We are completely what we see, what we hear, what we feel. That's what drives us, that's what leads us, that's what guides us. And it is impossible, impossible, quote scripture, impossible to please God without faith. Impossible. Absolutely impossible. So first things first, we've got to know and understand that God is faithful and He loves us. The scripture says that the kindness of God leads a man or woman to repent. The kindness of God. And what happens is, we then judge our behavior and we reflect it onto God. We project. We get angry. There's none. Most of us here have been angry at some point. We don't want to admit it because we're scared of being struck down with lightning. But God sees our heart. <laughs> he sees your heart. You think He doesn't see your heart? Mm. He sees my heart. He sees your heart. But yet, 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 He stays faithful. Yet, He stays devout. Yet, He stays committed. And he's waiting for you, and he's, and he's waiting for you, and he's waiting for you to get it. To get it and realize that faith will please him. Now, faith doesn't mean you're going to get it right, doesn't mean you're perfect. So, how do we get this faith? Does anybody know? It says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The word. Hebrews 11. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 11 is a, it's called the face chapter. Do you guys know that? Secondly, I'm sure you're wondering how long is the service going to be if the worship is that long. 
Match of the matches, we'll see how it goes. Says <laughs> <laughs> number one, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. We all have hope, yeah? Or when we come in, we don't have hope. Most of us don't have hope when we come in. Most of us come in, we down and out, but there are some of us come in and have hope. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand the world were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. <clears throat> by faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, in which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts through it, he being dead still speaks. By faith Enoch was taken. It goes on and speaks about all the people of faith, and then the father of faith they say is Abraham. And all of us know the story of Abraham. Abraham was promised that... He would be the father of many nations. And Abraham wasn't as perfect as you think because he's called the father of our faith. He's not as perfect as you think. Because at one stage in his walk with God, he tried to help God bless him. And he did. And even his wife tried to help him do what God said. They promised, okay, sleep with my, my man. Okay? And it came to a point, so much so that when, 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 when she heard Abraham speaking with God, and God said, you will save a child 13 years on after the promise, that she laughed. She laughed, but it said God, Abraham said, steadfast. So God changed his name around from Abraham, Abraham to Abraham, the father of many nations. So he was stirring up his faith, and stirring up his faith, and stirring up his faith. Until at the age of 99, he finally had the promise. But understand, even with that promise, that promise was challenged. Because that same promise, you start to sacrifice. That same kid you saw the same things. And Abraham at that time of his life was so full of faith and trusted God so much that he took him to the mount. And I tell you that, that kid wasn't a weakling. That kid I think was pretty strong at his age. Abraham was old. Was old. And he still asked his father, he said, where is the sacrifice? Do you think he didn't know his father with the rope? <laughs> no, he said, he's the only one with his dad. So he must be, and, I, and I think if Abraham, Abraham lay him down and tied him up, I don't think it was a physical fight. It sounds like he's just as much as Abraham was faithful, so was his son. And they trusted God in that time. And many of us come to a place like this, or to a place where we want to change our lives around, and we ask to sacrifice certain things, and we struggle to sacrifice those things. Because we refuse to stay in faith. We refuse to walk in faith. Refuse. Galatians 3.22 I like scripture, so please bear, bear with me. The scripture 322 says, But the scripture has confined all in the sin that the promise by faith in who? Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? The Word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. Let me tell you something now. Most of us come to the center and most of us, if we start falling by the wayside, our faith wanes in who? We always believe or, try, or believe in a God. We know there's a God, and that's when we get angry with a God, because we blame God for what we act. Have you noticed the thing that diminishes in your life is the Word? It is Jesus Himself. That's what starts diminishing your life. And people that start changing, you have to center what your focus becomes, your focus must become, well, must be on the Word. Negative, I'm, I'm ready to guarantee, people that are very negative, and don't feel like things are going to work out, I bet you the Word is very small in your life. I can't bet you, I don't have to bet you, so I can't bet, sorry. I can't bet. <laughs> but I'm willing to guarantee you that the word in your life is small. That your conversation about the word, your conversation about Jesus is small. It's time. Those of you that are positive and have hope and faith and trust, I bet you the word is big in your life. Jesus is your focus. Jesus is big in your life. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So when you sit in church, what your main focus is Jesus. If you sit in church and your main focus is your issues and your problems, guess what? You'll be negative. But if you sit in church or you're doing the program or, you, or even when you're out there and doing what you need to do, if your focus is on the word, your faith will be better. Your faith will grow. If you notice when you start falling by the wayside, the word becomes smaller in your life. You start growing, you start getting some of the word becomes bigger in your life. If you notice when you're at the center and you go through a positive time, I bet you the word is big in your life. I'm dead, sorry. Guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> the word is big in your life. 
The word becomes big in your life. And when our circumstances and situations to make the word small in our lives, when our simple things like time to make the word small in our lives, when our simple things like the monitor not having a nice attitude with you, or being told what to do, or something, you, you, we allow silly things to diminish or make the word, the word small in our lives. In John 3.30, I think it's 3.33 or 3.30. It speaks about that he must increase and I must decrease. As long as you're big, as long as you're big, you're going to miss it. You're not going to be a man or woman of faith. You will allow what you see and what you feel to guide and direct you. No matter how right you think you are or how right you are, if you allow what you see and what you feel to guide you, you're missing it. You're no longer in faith. Do you think when they crucified Jesus that Jesus was wrong? Not even a little bit. They said they could find nothing wrong with him. Nothing. And Jesus had the ability to call down legions of angels to sort them out. Legions. A legion, as far as I know, 12,000 in a legion. In a, in a grouping, as far as I know. It's a lot. If you read the Bible, one angel killed 185,000. One. But Jesus decided and remain in faith. He remain in the Word. He was the Word. So what we try and do in our lives, we say we're going to stop now, we're going to change our lives around, we're going to fix everything we've made wrong, but we're doing it in fear, we're not doing it in faith. And you cannot resist, you cannot resist if you're not submitted to God. And you can only be submitted to God, according to James, you can only resist the devil when you submit to God. And you can only be submitted to God if you're work, walking in pleasing if you're walking in faith. In 2 Corinthians 5, 7 it says we walk by faith, not by sight. If you want to know today if you're in faith or you're in fear, ask yourself, the reason you're making a decision is it what you see, what you feel, what you hear, or you're making a decision based on your trust and faith in the Word. Are you looking to Him today? Are you trusting Him today? Despite of you, maybe He remains faithful to us. He's Faithful, despite us. So think of the worst thing you've done. The worst. You guys got it? Still faithful. Still faithful. So when we get that, we'll change. That's what we need to get. Faith is a process. Building your faith is a process. If you work in an immediate, immediate thing in your life. As an we cannot afford to work in immediate things as you come. We cannot afford it. So we have to say, whoa, take our hands off the steering wheel and we must allow process. Immediate is based on the feelings and your fears and your worries and your concerns. That's immediate. Mm -hmm. Faith is based on there. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you something. Who sees this going into winter now? It's winter now. Can you see it? Who of you are worried that spring's not going to come back again? <laughs> Anybody worried? Anybody worried that summer is not going to come back here? Anybody? Hey? I suppose you can worry about, as a farmer, you can concern yourself with there's not going to be enough rain, etc., etc. But a farmer or person that plants seed understands seasons. Read your Bible from Genesis. God speaks about seasons and processes. You must rely and trust on seasons and processes. You're busy. We are busy in a process. Whether you're in, 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 in recovery or whether you're a businessman, there's a process for you to grow. And a lot of times, because we allow our feelings to control us, especially us as recovering addicts, we already we stunt our growth. When we feel a certain way, it doesn't mean we need to run away. And that's what we do over and over again. I truly believe that when we have feelings, it's just God telling you you're about to grow. That's all. You're about to grow. You guys like gym. Who, who of you that want to get further in gym allow the pain to stop them from going back? None of you. So why do you allow the pains of life to stop you from moving forward? No, no, no. Why? Why do you do that? Life is difficult as, as it is. And life is becoming more and more difficult. Mm -hmm. And God is looking for men and women of faith to make a difference in this world. And the world is not nice. It's not nice. There's some not nice people out there. But guess what? If we, don't, if we allow the not nice world, then we become the not nice people. And we cannot be the nice people if we're not walking in faith. Because <coughs> you can have a brilliant day and drive home and someone's going to cut you off. 
You know, really don't drive home and your, your cameras and stuff, or your phones, or you can, what then? Centurion that approached Jesus and his daughter, I think his daughter was ill, remember? And he said, Please come, my daughter is sick. And he said to her, he said, he said, I'm coming. He said, No, don't come, just say the word. And he said he has not seen so much faith in all of Jews. Just by going to Jesus, speaking to going to the word, hearing the word speak to him, he trusted enough that his daughter he would be healed. And Jesus was amazed by the man's faith. Amazed. All Jesus had to say is, I'm coming. He said, no, don't worry, don't worry about coming. I know if you sin and go and take, I know that you're in charge. I know who you say you are. I know you're the word. I know that you will be there. To Peter, I love this chapter. And I remember hearing someone preach on it the one day. Um, a lady called Juanita Bynum. Uh, very... Raspy, very intense, very intense. I think if you're, not, <laughs> if you're not really into the words, she'll freak you out. It's very good. Okay. Fruitful growth in faith is a heading in this, in this Bible. Verse 5. I'm going to go to verse 4 if you don't mind. I'll even go back. I don't want to freak you out too much. By which, not verse 4, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. So we believe God loves us, we believe God's faithful, we believe God's devout. So these promises. Now, it's been given to us. You know, you have it already. Have it already. We sort of learn you know, how to utilize it. We cannot utilize the things that God has given us if we don't operate in faith. So we get all upset when God said that He's got a plan and a purpose for our life and He can heal us and He, can, and he doesn't do any of it. But we don't realize we haven't allowed the trying of our faith. There's junk inside of us, people. God says, renew your mind. Get born again, saved, set free, spirits renewed. But there's junk. There's junk that needs to be pressed out. Says that through these you may be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, all diligence, add to your what? Your faith, virtue, inner strength. Now, if you allow a small thing in life to throw you off, how? The Bible promises says, if, you, if your strength faints in the day of adversity, how small is your strength? What is adversity? Adversity can be the very thing you're struggling with here. Maybe guys about the dishes. <laughs> you know that? We struggle with dishes. We struggle with failing for our duties in the bed. That, the Bible says, how small is our strength? Inner strength is more important than proving yourself right. Handling a situation is more important than showing everybody else up. To virtue, knowledge. There's a process. See the process. Add your faith, virtue, inner strength. When you add that, knowledge will come. Understanding will come. Not the other way around. Faith, virtue, inner strength, steadfastness. Stay steadfast. To knowledge, self-control. To knowledge, self-control. To self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. See the process? Now watch this. For if these things are yours and abound. Are you listening? If these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful. You will not be barren, and you will not be unfruitful. You, you will not. In the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who is the Lord Jesus Christ? The Word. For he who lacks these things, for he who lacks these things, is short-sighted, <laughs> even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will. Who wants to finish it for me? Never stumble. Never. It doesn't say. It doesn't say occasionally. 
says never. You know what never means in the Greek? You know the thing? Never means never in the Greek. <laughs> never. So if you do these things, and you work on your faith, and you allow your faith to process, and you find, and grow, and adding all these things, you will not stumble. You will not stumble. But it starts here. It starts with virtue. All of us must believe we're going to heaven one day. Most of us say, Jesus died for us. How many of you have seen heaven? So maybe one of two have a bit of a vision or another. But how many of you have seen heaven? How many of you? See, there's your faith there already. There's your faith. Your faith is already there. Now allow these processes to build your faith, grow your faith, so that you do not stumble. And okay, how right? You cannot use your feelings. And it interferes. If we trusted our feelings so much, people, then why do we try and manipulate it through drugs and alcohol? So why do we come to a center? Why do we try and change our lives and then stop trusting our feelings all over again? We didn't trust it anyway. We didn't trust it anyway. I'm saying love with my partner, but I don't trust it. <laughs> I'll never ever do that again, but you do it the next day. Huh? Can you not see? That's the beauty of, of a place like this. For me personally, on a personal level, is that it gives you a protective environment to start the process. But most of us, when we're in a bad place, we don't allow the process. And we say to ourselves, we'll start the process next month. Or when we leave. The process is really busy. Look to Jesus in faith. You're in the perfect place. Look to the way you feel, the way you see things. You've always been in the wrong place. Always been in the wrong place. Always been in the wrong relation. Always been in the wrong job. And always going back to your comfort. You heard that saying? God's not interested in your comfort. He's interested in your character. Amen. You will not develop character when you know <coughs> One more scripture. Some more scripture still in there. I want to keep you much longer. James 1. I like the book of James. I speak to the people at uh, when the church, church services I did the other day, and I realized that every scripture I was going, one of my favorites, one of my favorites. So I just said every scripture I mentioned was probably one of my favorites. So this is, yeah, it's one of my favorites. So, one of my favorites. How many favorites do you have? So I just cleared it out the way. Sometimes when we go through things, or most of the time when we go through things, um, it always feels like a trial. It's like we've got to fight, we've got to lash out, we've got to get angry, we've got to prove our point, we've got to do all these things. It's a trial. So if you feel you've got to react or respond, you're going through a trial. No matter how simple it may look to others. Being here can be a trial for you. Hello? It says here, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. If the person's positive, does it mean he's counting in joy? Yes. If the person's negative, does it mean he's seeing it as a stuff? <coughs> yes. So count for all joy. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. What do we lack a lot of? We lack consistency. What if it says maybe started something, never finished it? Mm -hmm. huh? Consistent. What would it say? Here's your answer. We're looking for the answer. Here's your answer. But let, knowing that the testing of your faith produces consistency, it produces patience. You know that patience in the Bible, if you look at your translation, means being consistent. Patience isn't allowing someone to annoy me and I don't get annoyed. It means being consistent in who you are. Are we consistent in who we are when we're in the election? Not a chance. We're like, what to take on Mr. Hyde? <laughs> no! We want to change it, but we don't realize process. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect, complete, lacking. There's your answer. Your answer is right there. You want to please God? Be a man of of faith. Don't walk by, by sight, but walk in faith. And know that when you focus on Jesus Christ and everything you do, the Word is coming into you and you're hearing and you're hearing and your faith is growing. And this life in general will start bringing processes along. Even if you are home right now, you have a process to have to face. Uh, went out Saturday night, feel bad for going out Saturday night because you spent money you shouldn't have, Sunday morning comes, you get to sing, go to church, go next week. It's right there. 
Right there. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, he's God, faith. Word, Jesus. Pains and aches and pains and going through a bit of stuff, nothing you're wrong. It means your faith has been refined. My head's put up. Father God, I want to thank you for your word, Lord. I want to thank you for your word that's in our hearts and in our lives. I want to thank you, Lord, that you've given to every one of us a measure of faith. And I thank you with that measure of faith in our hearts and our lives, Lord, that we allow the process of speaking spoken about in 2 Peter. And allow the process of spoken and speaking about in James, Lord. That no matter how we feel or what we're going through, that we must remember that you love us and you're faithful. Because you're faithful, we can be men and women of good enough faith. That in our faith we may believe and trust in you, Lord. And be filled with hope. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.